Hello, my name is Anna from the Veterinary Champ. In this presentation, we want to teach the veterinary students how to determine the packed cell value and total proteins from a dog's blood sample. The packed cell value PCV measures a blood sample's percentage of red blood cells. It is used to assess dog's health and is an important part of veterinary clinical pathology. The packed cell value is also known as hematocrit in certain reference books. The packed cell volume PCV, measures the proportion of blood made up of cells. The value is expressed as a percentage or fraction of cells in the blood. For example, a PCV of 40% means that there are 40 milliliters of cells in 100 milliliters of blood. Red blood cells account for nearly all the cells in the blood. The PCV increases when the number of red blood cells increases or when the total blood volume is reduced, as in dehydration. The PCV falls to less than normal, indicating anemia when your body decreases its production of red blood cells or increases its destruction of red blood cells or the blood cells are diluted by increases in total volume. This test is used to diagnose or evaluate anemia, decrease of red blood cells, polycythemia, increase in red blood cells, or dehydration. The PCV is an essential component of the complete blood count, commonly known as CBC. The PCV is repeated at regular intervals for many conditions, including monitoring treatment of anemia, polycythemia, or dehydration, monitoring the need for or effectiveness of blood transfusions, and monitoring ongoing bleeding to check its severity. A decreased PCV indicates anemia or hemodilution. Hemodilution is usually obvious due to administering a bolus of intravenous fluids. Further testing may be necessary to determine the exact cause of the anemia. Conditions that can result in a low PCV include bleeding, deficiencies in iron, vitamin B12, or minerals, inflammatory conditions, kidney disease, liver disease, hemolysis, where the red cells are being destroyed prematurely either due to an attack by the body's immune system, due to organ damage, or due to inherited abnormalities of the red cells or the hemoglobin they contain, bone marrow disorders. Some medicines including chemotherapy. The most common cause of increased PCV is dehydration. With adequate fluid intake, the PCV returns to normal. However, it may reflect a condition called polycythemia with too many red cells. In primary polycythemia, also known as polycythemia vera, the bone marrow overproduces red blood cells of its own accord. More commonly, polycythemia is due to factors outside the bone marrow, secondary polycythemia. Causes of secondary polycythemia include some lung or heart diseases where the bone marrow manufactures more red blood cells to carry enough oxygen throughout the body, liver or kidney disease, obesity, drug-induced, testosterone, growth hormone, and diuretics. Some tumors can secrete erythropoietin, stimulating the production of red blood cells, rare inherited hemoglobins, which don't release enough oxygen to the body. The veterinary student should know the following key points when evaluating the packed cell value results. Pregnancy usually causes a slightly decreased PCV due to extra fluid in the blood. Living at high altitudes causes an increased PCV. This is the body's response to the decreased pressure of oxygen available at these heights. Recent blood transfusions may give a misleading result. An ultrasound scan of the kidneys is recommended if a high PCV result is detected. You may also have increased white cell cells and platelets in polycythemia vera. The total protein test is a rough measure of all of the proteins in the plasma portion of blood. Proteins are important building blocks of all cells and tissues. Total protein measures the combined amount of proteins, the two major classes of albumin and immunoglobulin. Albumin is a carrier of many small molecules, but its main purpose is to keep fluid from leaking out of blood vessels while immunoglobulin proteins are antibodies. To a lesser extent, enzymes and more than 500 other proteins contribute to the total protein. In this video, we will discuss measuring total proteins in the plasma using a refractometer. An abnormal total protein concentration may indicate a problem in one or both of the main types of proteins. Further tests may be done to find out which particular protein is abnormal so that a diagnosis can be made. 
low total protein levels can suggest a liver disorder, a kidney disorder, a disorder in which protein is not digested or absorbed properly, or immunoglobulin is not being made, for example, in bone marrow failure. More specific tests, such as albumin and liver enzyme blood tests, must be performed to diagnose accurately. High total protein levels can indicate dehydration or some types of cancer that lead to an accumulation of abnormal protein. The veterinary student should be aware of the following important points. Prolonged application of a tourniquet during blood collection can increase total protein levels. Drugs that may increase protein levels include anabolic steroids, androgens, growth hormones, insulin, and progesterone. Drugs that may decrease protein levels include estrogens. I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a pack cell volume, also known as a PCV, and a protein on the plasma by refractometry. So you want to start with a EDTA tube that is um, unclotted and well mixed. So you just want to mix your tube after collection by gentle inversion and prior to doing any testing because the blood will settle out. If you are concerned there might be clots in your sample, take an applicator stick and just rum it around inside the sample and any clots will appear on the stick. If there's no clots, you are good to go. Fill two PCV tubes, about three quarters full. If you're having trouble filling your tube, let gravity be your friend and fill it approximately three quarters full. There is no right or wrong end to these tubes, even though one is marked with a blue line. The only thing that I recommend is to not fill your tube right to that blue line because then it makes it a bit more difficult to read your PCV. After you have filled your tube, you want to wipe off the outside of any blood just so you don't get blood in your sealant. Um, and you can give it a couple of pushes with the sealant before you go to spin it just to make sure that it doesn't blow out. So I'm going to go over to our microhematocrit centrifuge. And the reason I've spun two tubes is you may need two tubes of plasma for your refractometer protein. We'll spin our uh, Micromatocrit tubes, you want to make sure that your sealant is to the outside ring. If that doesn't happen, you are going to end up with a bloody glassy mess. Um, put them across from one another so the centrifuge is balanced. I'm going to put our lid on. Gently put the lid down and we will press start. So this one spins for five minutes at 13,300 RPM. So once the time has elapsed, we open the lid, remove the cover plate, and we have our spun samples inside. These ones are obvious, are quite hemolyzed. You always want to review your plasma color when you take them out of the centrifuge. Once your tubes have been removed from the centrifuge, you need to look at the plasma to check for any color changes. This tube is normal plasma color. This is showing hemolysis. This tube is a slight degree of lipemia as well as some hemolysis and this tube is showing a fairly marked degree of yellow color or icterus. So once you have observed the plasma color, then you would go on to read the packed cell volume. The packed cell volume is determined using a reader, and in this particular case, you put the interface of the plasticine and the blood at the bottom of the red line where it says zero and you put the interface of the plasma and air at the top where it says 100 and then you move down to find where the top of the red cell layer lies 
You always want to read your Paxil volume underneath the Buffy coat, so that will be the white layer that you find on top of the red cells. Though size of the Buffy coat will vary depending upon the white blood cell count and the platelet count. Both white cells and platelets are in the Buffy coat. So in this case, your Paxil volume is looking to be at 50 percent or 0 0.50 liters per liter. Once you have read your Paxil volume, you'll move on to do your uh, plasma protein by refractometry. And bearing in mind that this um, measurement is very susceptible to interferences, such as high glucose, uh, lipemia. If you have a small sample volume, you'll get a falsely elevated um, protein. So just be sure that if you do get a result that you don't think is reasonable, check it with a chemistry protein. I am going to transfer the plasma from this tube onto the refractometer platen. And you do that by breaking the tube just above the red cell layer. So push it away from you. And then turn it over so that you use the unbroken end if you do end up tapping it onto your platen. Most refractometers um, may have a little notch in here that will allow you to touch the end of the tube to suck the plasma onto the platen, but this one doesn't have that. So we'll try and let um, capillary action fill the platen. And this is where you'll probably need a second tube. We don't encourage blowing plasma out. So once your plasma is adequately on the platen, which will be easy to see, it's dark rather than a mottled or mostly light, then you bring your instrument up to your eye and you look through it and find the appropriate scale. On this refractometer, it says SP for serum protein and then it says grams per 100 ml and you look for a clear straight line interface. There's a dark and a light break and that is where you read your result and in this case it's 76 grams per liter or 7.6 grams per 100 ml. If you have lipemia or hemolysis it can make reading that line very difficult and in those cases we don't guess we just say we can't provide the protein. Once you're done, you can just wipe your platen off with a Kleenex and then with distilled water to keep it clean.